While most actors will have a couple of bad films on their resume, these actors sadly have the opposite. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors with only one good movie. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at actors that let their talent shine through in a particularly strong film, but who've otherwise starred in one stinker after another. Number 10, Hayden Christensen, Shattered Glass. I didn't do anything wrong, Chuck. I really wish you'd stop saying that. Poor Hayden, his career was over before it really began. Starring in episode two and episode three of the very divisive Star Wars prequels, Christensen was criticized for his portrayal of Anakin Skywalker and his overall acting ability. In between those films, however, he starred in the biopic Shattered Glass. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for backing me. It's what editors do. Portraying Stephen Glass, who became notorious for his falsified magazine articles, Christensen's brilliant portrayal helped the film receive rave reviews. While Christensen would star in other financially successful films, he has yet to see another critical hit. I just got a letter from David Keane. He ran the CPAC conference. He's made- Are you mad at me? Number nine, Andrew Dice Clay, Blue Jasmine. Yeah. When she had all that money, she wanted nothing to do with you. Now that she's broke, all of a sudden she's moving in. For all the success Andrew Dice Clay has had in the entertainment industry, the comedian's track record at the box office is nothing short of dismal. That was the case until he was cast in Woody Allen's award-winning film Blue Jasmine. If nothing else, Clay returning to film after 12 years and attempting to do a drama was a bold step. You know, I'm no gambler. I mean, not with my one chance hey, to- come on, we don't know the first thing about money, but he does. The film, however, was a critical and commercial hit, and Clay's performance was praised. Along with the 2015 Entourage movie, Blue Jasmine is the only film he's done in recent years. Here's hoping the Dice Man can get another good role. No, 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 it's not necessary. Please, oh. please, please, you're our guest, science says. Number eight, Tom Arnold, True Lies. The game's over. Your career as an international terrorist has been well documented. No. Oh yeah, no, no, oh yeah! No. Prior to the box office juggernaut that is True Lies, Tom Arnold was known for his relationship with Roseanne Barr and his character Arnie that appeared on her sitcom. Earning an MTV Movie Award nomination for his portrayal of government agent Albert Gibson in True Lies, Tom Arnold's stock in Hollywood skyrocketed. Boy, I remember the first time I got shot out of a cannon. What groundbreaking roles did he take after this? How about the token white guy in Soul Plane or a guy who sang about being his own grandpa? The rest of his film library is just as varied, but there isn't another good offering in the bunch. Darn it, I'm not gonna take it anymore. Number seven, Cuba Gooding Jr., Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s star was on the rise after he won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar and Golden Globe for his role as the braggadocious Rod Tidwell in Jerry Maguire. I'm not gonna cry, Roy. <laughs> like Tidwell's catchphrase, show me the money, Gooding became the hottest thing after the film's success. However, no film he's done since has matched the magic of the acclaimed comedy. While many of Gooding's films seemed good on paper and tanked in execution, there was no way to make excuses for Snow Dogs and Daddy Day Camp. When Gooding can show us a film that can be enjoyed by fans and critics alike, then he will again be shown the money. Two years and never even let me fire a weapon. Number six, Brendan Fraser, Gods and Monsters. The monster's lonely, he wants a friend. While Brendan Fraser headlined the critically mixed but financially profitable Mummy trilogy, he took part in the Academy Award-winning Gods and Monsters a year earlier. Sharing scenes with veteran actors Lynn Redgrave and Sir Ian McKellen, Fraser's performance in the drama showed a whole other range of his acting ability. I'm not married. Why? I don't know, I guess because uh, <laughs> no girl in her right mind had me. More often than not though, Fraser played in mainly over-the-top comedy films like the live-action adaptations of George of the Jungle and Dudley Do-Right. While coming a long way from his humble beginnings in Encino Man and being a part of more dramatic film roles, Gods and Monsters was the critical peak he never returned to. Okay, just cut it out, okay? Number five, Marlon Wayans, Requiem for a Dream. Aha, dynamite. Marlon is a member of the Wayans family and got his start on his brother Keenan's film, I'm Gonna Get You Sucka. While dipping into the action and drama film genres, Wayans is best known for working with his brother Sean on films that at best can be good for a cheap laugh. Your mother's so old 
that her breast milk is powdered. You breastfeed like this. But in Darren Aronofsky's drug drama Requiem for a Dream, Wayans dives deep into his character and gives a remarkable performance. The performance is such a stark contrast to his comedic offerings that it's almost hard to comprehend that it's even the same actor. All I'm saying is we should take a little taste so we know how much to cut. Number four, Linda Blair, The Exorcist. Where's Reagan? In here with us. Being a child actor in Hollywood is a very difficult road. For her role as the possessed Reagan McNeil in The Exorcist, Linda Blair became a Golden Globe winning and Academy Award nominated supporting actress. The terrifying role garnered her instant name recognition, but she was unable to duplicate that success in the rest of her film work. You'd like that? Intensely. After the critical dumpster fire that was The Exorcist II, Blair became synonymous with lackluster horror movies and films that referenced her most acclaimed role, a role that overshadowed the rest of her career. Actually, I didn't make out so bad. Number three, Katherine Heigl, Knocked Up. Here it goes. Um, I'm pregnant. 2007 was a great year for Katherine Heigl. She not only won a Best Supporting Actress Emmy for her role as Dr. Stevens in Grey's Anatomy, but the Judd Apatow rom-com Knocked Up was critically successful and a box office hit, too. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is good. Not long after, Heigl's movie career took off, earning several more financial successes. We say financial, as critics slammed these films hard. Audiences have been more sheepish towards her recent offerings. You know things aren't as good as they used to be when your most recent successful film is The Nut Job. This is incredible. <laughs> Number two, Stephen Baldwin, The Usual Suspects. There's nothing that can't be done. When you're a Baldwin in Hollywood and don't have the first name Alec, you tend to get overshadowed a bit. Still, every Baldwin gets their time to shine. Stephen, for example, is part of the stellar ensemble cast of the noir film The Usual Suspects. His role as the foul-mouthed criminal Michael McManus is part of why this movie is loved by filmgoers, won Academy Awards, and quintupled its budget. Mama for me, shot some guys, but a boom, but a bing, bang, boom. But most of Baldwin's other films pale in comparison, lacking the same quality storytelling and often flopping drastically. Just a little humor. I have to admit I'm funny, ain't I? <laughs> Number one, Tyler Perry, Gone Girl. Whatever they found, I think it's safe to assume that it's very bad. Tyler Perry is the man that made Medea a household name, whether we wanted it or not. You don't know about from the project. Come on, come on, come on. Now, come on, what the hell is your problem? Come on, shut up, shut up. A man that wears many hats, Perry's role as an actor is the most tumultuous. Movies featuring Mabel Medea Simmons have yet to get the critics on their side. Even his transition to a more dramatic film like Alex Cross was universally panned. I'm trying to make somebody hurt, want somebody to pay, wants them to suffer. But as the lawyer Tanner Bolt in the thriller Gone Girl, Perry received critical praise that Medea never did. And it didn't hurt that the film made over $360 million at the box office. While Perry and Medea still may make some money, Perry's portrayal in Gone Girl was as good as gold. I would draw you, as if you're doing a deposition, what to say, what not to say. A trained monkey? A trained monkey who doesn't get lethal injection. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.